Hi, my name is Georgina Hallaby, and I'm a performance and well-being coach. And before I started coaching about four years ago, I worked in the advertising and marketing technology industries, where I held a number of senior roles for about 25 years. And throughout that time, it was always very important for me to balance two fundamental needs, the need for outer success and the need for inner peace. And this is exactly what I coach executives um, and C-suites on today. It's really about creating that balance between uh, accelerating peak performance and well-being, not one at the expense of the other. And so today I'm delighted to be here talking to you about manifesting your goals. And before I jump into this, I'd love to explain a little bit about how it works. So when we look at chaos theory, the understanding of weather patterns and how things like a small butterfly, the flap of a butterfly's wing in Texas can create a tornado in Brazil, what they started to understand was sometimes small changes to inputs can have huge changes to outputs. And they wanted to understand how and why this happened. So this is how and where chaos theory was born. They started to understand that complex systems can actually have very, very simple causes. And in reverse, simple patterns can also be found amidst chaos. So how and where does that apply to us? So I want you to imagine that you're standing at the top of a busy train station, looking down from a balcony, and there's just a flood of people in front of you. It looks like absolute chaos and completely random. Just a, a whole load of flowing people, like data points. And then you start to notice that there's a coffee cart and a ticketing booth. And people are actually congregating around both the ticketing cart and the coffee booth. So the ticketing cart and the top coffee booth are actually something that we called strange attractors. Actually pulling in people uh, around them so that you're creating this uh, patterns, simple patterns amid the chaos. And in the same way, when we start to look at strange attractors and how they work in our own life, what we put our conscious attention on, such as our interests, our values, our beliefs and attentions, these become strange attractors too. Because our brain takes in a whole multitude of data, all of the time, a barrage of data, and we filter it through our awareness and we only pull through stuff that is of interest to us based on our interests, values, our beliefs and intentions that then get served up to our conscious attention. So we're constantly sifting out from the information based on these strange attractors to us. And when you think of it that way, then we are actually looking at the filters that we apply in everyday life we can understand that we choose the reality that is relevant to us and we filter it through our interests, values, beliefs and intentions. And this leads me on to my first tip that I want to share with you. And the first one is be intentional. When we're intentional, we're actually instructing our brain to go and sift through and find all of the relevant information, opportunities and synchronicities that will get us to where we want to be. So, for example, if you've just had a child and you notice all of a sudden that everybody's got a pram, everybody's got babies, or you just buy a red car, suddenly everybody's got red cars. It's not because all of a sudden everybody's gone and had babies in that last moment and got red cars. It's just that you're actually starting to notice it. So this allows your brain to actually find those opportunities for you. And when there is a gap, when you've got an intention, when there is a gap between what your mind sees as reality and what is actually there in the current reality, your mind hates that gap. It hates that dissonance. So it does everything that it can to bridge that. It will find all of the right opportunities so that you are living in the reality that your mind is seeing. So tip one, be intentional. My second tip, imagine your goals as if you've achieved them. Now, imagination is always so much stronger than your willpower. And when you're able to imagine, you're actually pulling together, you're sparking your mind, your body, your emotions, your spirits, all of them, all of your mind, body in one. And that actually creates congruence between your conscious 
attention and your subconscious as well. So when you're be, being able to create that congruence throughout yourself, you're able to achieve goals faster and with more ease. So if you're struggling to achieve your goal and it feels like you're just butting your head against this never ending obstacle, just take a moment, shut your eyes, take a deep breath and imagine. And that will also help you lower your blood pressure and your cortisol levels. And it will actually switch you into a, a place of your brain that is more resourceful and creative. Right. My third tip is to focus on the being, not the doing. So, for example, if you are at a, a stage in your life where you want something um, in your career, you're finding that you are stuck where you're at or you're not entirely happy. You don't quite know where you want to get to. You don't want to pigeon yourself, pigeonhole yourself in the what you're doing. I want to be in this business, doing this position. Um, and that might end up pigeonholing you rather than being able to open your mind to the possibilities. So focus on the being, how it would actually feel within you, and then use that to harness your imagination from. So, for example, how would your life look? Imagine how would you feel in that moment? How would you be showing up? How would your bank balance look like? How would a typical day be? So you're focusing on the being. And when you're focusing on the feelings and the experience, rather than I want to have a job that looks like this, that's cost, that is earning me this many, this much a, a, a month, you're actually focusing on the being. It's more expansive. It's more visceral. It's more holistic. And it allows enough space to create abundance in unexpected ways. Once again, the universe will bring in what it needs so that you are in alignment with what your mind sees, what it feels and what it wants to experience. So harness your imagination and really focus on the being, how you are, how you're feeling, not on what you're doing. And then my final tip is to harness your why. Now, I love this saying, a life without purpose is just aimlessly doing stuff. And we each have a purpose in life. We each have a why. And sometimes we lose sight of it. It's easy to lose sight of it, especially with how busy things are at the moment and how uncertainty is always throwing us off course, particularly now. Life may not always hand you the map that you expect, but when you're able to harness your why, this will be your North Star. It will always keep you honed in on the right direction you want to go to, whatever the path you end up taking, whatever the vagaries. If you lose your way, if you lose your sense of direction, if you have your why, this will always be a compass for you. So I hope this is of use to you as you start to manifest your goals. Once again, be intentional, really imagine them viscerally, imagining how you're feeling and really harness your why. And if you need any help at all in harnessing your why or manifesting your goals, um, reach out. I'd love to be of support. Thank you for your time.